Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's raining outside today, so I thought I'd bring it inside and have a little talk about why a disc has high speed turn. Things. So this is super fascinating to me. I thought I'd share with you what I understand currently. Um, so let's go back and let's review from our last video. Our last video, we uh, I made this little contraption. We spin it up and we get to see what happens. So quick review, here's my contraption. We've got a little axle on it, uh, it spins, and then we can understand what is gyroscopic precession. So let's spin the disc up. Okay, now when we spin this disc up. If I put, as you can see, I'm, I'm 90 degrees off from the axle here. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to push down here and you can see that the nose goes up. Let's do the same thing again. If I push down on this side, if I push upwards and part of force upwards on the disc, you'll see that the nose goes down here. And it seems like it's magic, but basically what's happening is we have gyroscopic precession of the disc has spin, spin is angular momentum. That then stabilizes the flight of the disc and it resists anything that we call off-axis torque. Its axis is its spinning axis here. Anything that's in plane with the level part of the flying disc. So anything that's off-axis is, let's say, my finger pushing up and the nose goes down. That effect takes place 90 degrees down the chain of precession. So we're going to move forward from your perspective. You're throwing a disc towards me. So if your right hand backhand, you throw a disc towards me, it's going like this. Air is moving over the disc towards you. Well, I shouldn't say towards you. It's flying away from you. So you understand intuitively then that the airflow over the disc is this direction. Why this is important is because discs generate a certain amount of lift. We have certain forces that are acting on the disc. We have gravity, we have lift, and then we have where that lift is within the dynamic flight of the disc. So when we move a airfoil, a wing through the air, the faster you go, the more the lift moves behind the center of balance. The center of pressure moves behind the center of balance. So I've got another disc here. I've got some things drawn on it. Here's what we have first. Right here, we have gravity pushing down on the disc at all times. Next, when we throw a disc, we have lift fighting to get it up against gravity. And so it sustains it during its duration of flight. The interesting thing is though, as the disc is flying away from you towards me, the center of lift moves behind the center of gravity. Here's our center of gravity right here. I got weight on this side now. So our center of gravity is here, right here. The lift moves behind the center of gravity. So what's going to happen if I spin my disc up again is the lifting specter. If I pull on this from the center of gravity and I pull on this, you're going to see it wants to pull that nose down. It, let's more specifically say it pulls upwards on the tail of the disc or the a part of the disc closest to you. But because this has gyroscopic precession, that force of lifting the tail moves 90 degrees away up the chain and wants to lift on this side of the disc. All right, so let's see what happens here. We're gonna do that with this. It's flying away from you. I'm going to impart lift on this back part of the disc. See, the left side of the wing goes up because angular momentum transfers from the lift from the back of the disc towards the left side of the disc and then we get high speed turn left begins moving to right. The really neat thing is, is if we understand that principle, then as the disc is flying away from you, after a while, the center of lift moves past the center of gravity, the center of gravity being the center of balance on the disc. Gravity is acting on the disc at all times. Lift is acting on it, but in different positions throughout the disc. Now, since it's slowing down, Lift moves in front of the center of gravity. So let's go like this, let's go like this. Here's our center of gravity again. And if I have this pulling up on this side, pulling up now from your perspective on the front of the disc, lift is lifting towards the front of the disc. That effect is going to take place, take effect 90 degrees away because of gyroscopic precession. And so let's see what happens then.
right in front here. I'm going to push up on the front because that's where our lift is acting. And you can see that it wants to go into what we would call fade. So as the disc is experiencing its flight, its flight changes as the center of lift under high speed moves behind the center of gravity and it begins pulling up on the tail of the disc. That effect takes place 90 degrees away. It goes into high speed turn. As the disc slows down, this center of lift begins processing and moving forward until it moves in front of the center of balance. And as it moves in front of the center of balance, it begins pulling up on the front of the disc. That effect takes place 90 degrees away along the chain of procession. And then you end up with low speed fade. Now I think a really cool adage to this is let's understand something that is often discussed about what makes a disc overstable versus understable. And there's one basic principle, a couple basic principles that define this. So let's look at this right here. I've created ourselves, this is the edge of the wing. So let's imagine this, talking about this right here, this little triangle shaped part of the wing. The triangle shaped part of the wing that we're discussing is right here to right here and the, the wedge of it, the part that we grab up here. So everything between the yellow represents how much air is going to be moved out of the way by the disc. All discs have a basic depth dimension and that's how much air they move. So that's the depth of your triangle all the way around. That's how much air is gonna get diverted. Now what we have is we have this little guy here, the nose of the disc will divert the air below it or divert the air over the top. So the more air you divert over the top, the more you're gonna generate lift. The more, you gen move, the more you move that part line higher, the more air you're going to divert below the disc. You're gonna find something that's neutral, and then you're gonna find something that's really overstable, and then let's go dramatic for the people that love something like a Captain's Raptor or a Nuke OS or a Tilt or something like that. You're gonna see that we, we generate very little, or we should say, you will see that we, we divert very little air over the top of the disc. Most of the air is diverted below. And what this means is, for our example, is when we get to a place where we are diverting a ton of air underneath the disc and not much over the top, is that we don't generate much lift, which also will mean that our center of pressure, our center of lift, that invisible string of lift that's pulling this disc up as it speeds through the air, never gets behind the center of gravity. And if, that disc, if there's not enough air generating lift through the center of gravity, that this wing here, we're going to feel that lift force on the front of the disc, which is then, of course, going to transfer 90 degrees to the right side and out of your hand, let's do it from your perspective, we're gonna have a lift force. Um, I need to get it on your perspective. That lift force right here, flying towards me, is going to be towards the front of the disc always. Our, our center of lift is never going to get behind our center of gravity and that force is going to transfer 90 degrees away because of gyroscopic precession and the disc is going to lift up on the right wing throughout the flight. So really overstable discs divert very little air over the top of the disc and since they divert very little air over the top of the disc, the center of lift never gets behind the center of balance and that means that it's always wanting, the forces it's feeling is always wanting to process towards fade. When we have a disc that's very understable, the center of lift moves way behind the center of gravity, lifting heavily on that invisible string on this side of the disc, and the effect takes place here, and we get really understable high-speed turn. That's the basics of it as far as I understand it. In the most simplistic form, this is not the physicist, you know, expounding on what is, what is all going on in the long mathematical algorithms that pertain to this subject, but it's basically so that we as laymen can understand the principles of what's going on and learn from that. This has a huge effect on understanding how wind affects a disc. We'll chat about that in some other future episode. Thanks for coming. Thanks for visiting. Like and subscribe below, and we'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.